are both a little tired. We've had we've had fine weeks. You know what? Every week that we get is a blessing. So we're gonna we're gonna until it's not <laughs> <laughs> until we end up here at this table. Um, but no, actually today I, I came from a shoot um, and I got to take pictures of the first couple that I ever shot for a wedding. Oh really? Yeah, seven years later, and, I, and they got they got um, got some stuff going on. Oh, it was it was really fun. Really That's fun. pretty cool. Yeah, no, it was really cool. Um, but today we have something a little bit more fun. Yes, um, pleasing our manager. Yes, it's it's a it's kind of like a Ben Shapiro watching TikTok situation. We have been forced. I don't think it's quite that bad. I'm I'm excited to watch these. I don't think Ben's ever excited to watch TikToks. I don't. I don't, not much probably excites him other than like maybe reading the Bible in original Hebrew. Maybe. Maybe. Have you seen uh, all the AI videos of like Ben Shapiro and Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson and Joker playing Minecraft and stuff like that? No. And Elon Musk. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Well, that's a reaction video in itself. (laughs) I'd have to try and find it. Uh, I don't know where it is, but there's one that they have. Uh, the AI created Joe Rogan, Elon Musk. Um, did they have Joe Biden in it? Oh, I it. hope so. I know it's Joe Rogan, Elon Musk. I want to say no, it wasn't. Okay, there is. This it was, but they're like they're like mining stuff. Oh, it's no, yeah, Jor- have- Jordan Peterson, Joe Rogan, and Elon Musk, and I have the three of them mining with Joker from TC, and they're all just playing Minecraft together. <laughs> And the the Joe Rogan one is actually it's it's surprisingly like it's really good. I mean he's got hours and he's got thousands of hours of content out there between his comedy and his podcast. So the AI really did a good job with his voice. That's but even scary. even Elon's uh, speech patterns that he oh that he has the AI was getting that and and Jordan Peterson is just the wow. funniest thing to listen to them argue about if they're gonna if they're gonna mine stuff to craft with first or craft things to mine <laughs> with. <laughs> it was. <laughs> That is so oh. dumb. No, it's and good. Incredible. It's so good. Now have you he, have you seen the video where this guy like feeds um, like all these different Joe Biden speech to speeches to a bot and the bot writes a script? So good. It's so yes. funny. It's, it's so it funny. It is good. Equally funny. I think our manager has some pitch meeting videos she's been wanting us to react to. Now I don't know that Jordan and I have actually watched all of the shows and movies in question today. But it'll hopefully still be. But funny. I know quite a bit about them. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, we we didn't pre-screen these, so these are these are fresh. All right, just let me know when you want me to pause and. Yeah, we yeah. Will, we Let's will get into do it. that. All right, we'll move that screen over. Oh, She-Hulk. Yeah, haven't seen this. You? No, haven't I've watched seen this. probably half a dozen reviews on it. I've seen the trailer though, because the CGI and like everything was so. I've bad. seen the trailer. I've seen some clips, and I've seen some reviews on it. And, and like she's like carrying the guy out, and it's just. I'm not excited about this, but uh, it, nevertheless, here we go. All right. Oh, sorry, I forgot to unmute the whole tab. Yeah, that's an important. It's an important bit there. We can rewind that. So, you have some new Disney Plus content for me? Yes, sir, I do. Although I am kind of worried we might be oversaturating people with Marvel stuff at the moment. Maybe we should take a breather between (laughs) projects for a sec. No. (laughs) Well, okay then. So I was making my way down the list of Marvel characters we haven't brought into the MCU yet, and I was thinking we could make a She-Hulk show. Oh, yeah, we haven't done that character yet. That sounds like money to me. Yeah, and it's a real fun character, because in the comics, she was breaking the fourth wall even before Deadpool. You know, I can see that working well in Deadpool movies, or comic books, but do you think it might lower the impact of the overall MCU to have a character that knows that they're in a cinematic universe? Hey, shut up. So we're going to meet Jennifer Walters, <laughs> who's a lawyer, and also Bruce Banner's cousin. Okay, from stop the movie. it, though. Like, sure. like, here's the point that he's bringing up, though, um, is that they were stretching so much to find another character to add in and yeah. one that would specifically please the, mo- the woke mob. He doesn't exactly say it like that because I don't think this guy's a conservative in any way, um, but he's basically saying what's true. It's like they're just trying to push out content. Yeah, and that's and it. it's certainly what it looks like at this point. All right, let's go back. And that she has powers. Wow, and so what else did we find out in the first episode? I think I just oh, you know Captain America? Yeah. yeah. Hey, but it's Peter. 
Would you want that? Sorry, guys. Hotkeys are on drunk. numbers. Um, <laughs> so That's actually, you know what? We'll probably just stay out of full screen. That's fine. It'll keep us. It'll keep our little window down here. Yeah, that's good. We'll come back here. Deadpool. You know, I can see that working well in Deadpool movies or comic books, but do you think it might lower the impact of the overall MCU to have a character that knows that they're in a cinematic universe? Hey, shut up. So we're going to meet Jennifer Walters, who's a lawyer and also Bruce Banner's cousin. He's from the movies. He sure is, <laughs> sir. And so they get into a car accident and she gets some of his blood in her blood. Oh, unexpected blood combos are tight. <laughs> okay. And so since they're related, job, she Hulk. turns Not into a Hulk him. as well. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. 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 And so Bruce is going to show her some cool stuff about being a Hulk. Like you can drink alcohol and not get drunk. Why would you want that? Pretty cool, right? Not really. And so he's going to teach her and try to guide her through these new powers. And she's going to kind of make fun of him and insult him. So that's going to be fun. That kind of makes her seem a little rude and mean. He's just trying to help her because he cares about her. Well, she doesn't really want his help. Plus, she's already kind of mastered the whole Hulk thing already. Oh, she has? Yes, sir. She's already oh, fantastic like and agile. And she could turn into She-Hulk at will without losing control of herself at all. How is that possible? I feel like it took Bruce a long time to master all that. Well, Jen explains to Bruce that because she's been catcalled and mansplained to and some men are straight up dangerous, she's much better at controlling her anger than Bruce because she's had to do it infinitely more than he has. Okay, yeah, no, I mean, I see what she's saying and in no way do I want to belittle what women have to go through at all. Careful. But also, she's saying this to Bruce Banner who saved the planet multiple times and lost his best friend and his love interest and was turned into a monster and chased by governments and turned into a gladiator slave on an alien planet tried to take his own life it's so like, here's something of all people, though <laughs> that he might be a little bit more angry <laughs> yeah that's the thing though like but that's part of the point is that have you seen have you seen like the new gym tiktok videos where like these girls are like oh no this guy is staring at me in the gym and yeah, I I know the ones that? you I know the ones you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, well, it kind of like fits into this where this one's like, oh, I've been catcalled so much, and you know, and all this stuff happens, and I feel like with women, they kind of just like stretch the victimhood as much as they can. Where like as a woman, like yes, it's gonna happen. Like it's just gonna happen. Probably gonna get catcalled. You might get hit on every once in a while. I'm not saying that it's necessarily right, although sometimes if, if they're interested in the guy, then it's okay. But if they're not interested, then it's not okay. Or if the guy's ugly, it's not okay. Right, exactly. Um, where, like, that's just kind of a part of life where, like, they're getting all, all butthurt about things that just normally happen. Yeah, luckily I've seen the internet calling those ones out where they're just like, you know, maybe the guys are just curious why you have a phone strapped to your butt that's oh, filming exactly them. there was yeah. one chick that was walking on a grocery store with her phone at the back pocket recording uh and just like all these guys looking at her looking at her butt basically was the video and maybe they were uh but the other chances that maybe they were wondering why a phone was or a phone or a camera i don't know what it was but i mean it's it's in the back pocket and it was it was recording so it was whether they could tell or not, it is kind of an odd thing if you've got your phone sticking halfway out of your pocket. But I also don't have girl jeans and girl pockets. That's true. Or rather true. the lack of pockets. So, not well, sure. Like, here's the thing, though. Like, okay, a guy stares at your butt or he glances at it because guys are visual. It happens. But then guess what? You look away. Like, that's just, I don't know. That's just how it happens. I don't know. I'm not that know. upset about it. But back to back to Hulk over here. Um Oh, uh, that's a perfect, perfect spot. Yeah. It's uh, just, I don't know, uh, the way they wrote her in this. I, I've i seen quite a few of the clips about this uh, and some other reviews, and there are differences in their abilities. She's not as hulkish as he is. In comics, originally it was a blood transfusion to save her life or something. So, again... I don't I don't get why they took this like super ungrateful I don't need your help. Uh I've mastered it. I'm perfect at this already. This is supposed to like make her look like she's a strong independent female that's like they, they've any already done man. this though. They did it with Captain Marvel. Did. Of course they did. They did it with Captain Marvel and over in Star Wars they did it with Rey. It's just repackaged. That's the yeah, thing. It's, it's just, just the same thing over and over again. She Hulk is just a vehicle. This is what we talked about our last last episode. These characters are just a, a vehicle for an ideology at this point. They don't really have their own character. Just make stories and characters. And, are actually and good. stop writing shit around life lessons. It it gets old. 
Yeah, it's it's like, it feels like they it's like, it feels like they're making like Winnie the Pooh and Caillou and Baron's Team Bears and Arthur, but they're putting it in adult movies now. It's like you know how like all those younger kids shows all have like the little life lessons that they teach kids right. on. It's like they're yeah. doing it again, but for adults. Yeah, and we're over it. We're tired of it. We, well, we we've outgrown it. Well, uh, the way that adults like stories is. As a child, you have to have someone explain to you the moral of something. That's why when you get punished, they're like, hey, do you know what you did? They have to explain to you the lesson. Mm -hmm. When adults make mistakes and screw up in real life, that's how they learn. And if you create a good character that learns from their mistakes, they don't need to be taught something. Like, they just learn it through the story. That's how it happens. All right, go ahead. Okay, so I hear what you're saying, and it's actually not okay for you to point that out. Oh, okay, my bad. Oh, it's too late. You're on a list now. You can't have any <laughs> opinions about this show without being classified as being on one extreme of a very complicated issue. Ah, dang it. I hate being on lists. So anyway, Jen goes back to her life as a lawyer, and during a trial, a super-powered influencer, which oh, is a thing in the design. MCU now, apparently burst through the wall. Uh-oh. And so then towards the end of the first episode, Jen's going to turn into She-Hulk, and everyone's going to learn that she has powers. Wow, and so what else do we find out in the first episode? Oh, well, you know Captain America? Yeah. He put his pee-pee in a lady. What? Then Jen gets fired from her lawyer job and gets hired at another firm to start like a superhero law division. Okay, so this becomes kind of like a lawyer show. Ah, kinda. Sometimes. A little. Do you know how to write courtroom <laughs> scenes? Nope, and then so also it's gonna be kind of a slice of life kind of show, like Jen's gonna go on dates and stuff. Right, okay, does she also fight crime or? Eh, not so much. So like, what? What happens? Oh, well, stuff. <laughs> you know, sometimes. All right, is there... Can you... The character you is the point. Please. Oh, well, at a certain point, she's going to represent Emil Blonsky, so that's going to be pretty cool. I don't think I know who that is. Remember? You know, he was in the movie. The, the 14 years ago, he was in the movie. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. No, it wasn't a super Which memorable one? character. Abomination. Yeah. Oh, that doesn't really matter, to be it's honest. Kind of, they've turned him into a hippie joke now. a completely different character oh. now. Oh, okay, great. It's all connected. Also, Wong is going to show up sometimes. He's yep. from the movies. He is, and he's going to become friends with this girl, Madison. And what's her deal? She's always drunk and she's the absolute best part of the show. Nice. Also, at a certain point, <laughs> She-Hulk is gonna twerk with Megan the Stallion. What? Superheroes don't usually twerk? Exactly. So people are gonna be like, what? And then other people are gonna be, you know, deeply angry about it. Oh my god, yep, what? You know, see, that's gonna be kind of a thing in the show. We're gonna kind of rile up angry internet dudes and then make fun of them for getting riled up. That's gonna be really good for the state of internet discourse, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna help with all the toxicity online, I'm pretty sure. So any interesting plot threads or anything I should know about? Oh, there's like this group of toxic dudes that call themselves Intelligentsia, and they're trying to get some of She-Hulk's blood. Oh boy, I bet that's gonna come into play later. <laughs> What the hell is that noise? It was, oh yeah, I heard it. What did it mean, though? Well, see, we're going to get to the finale, and it's going to be set up like a big Marvel showdown, you know? Oh, okay. So there's going to be this toxic dude that turns into a Hulk, and then Bruce shows up, and Abomination's there, and it's going to be this big showdown type thing. Uh-oh, going to be hard for her to get out of that situation. Actually, it's going to be super easy. <laughs> Barely in the yeah, Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, see, Jen is going to break the fourth wall and be like, is this working for anyone? Okay. She's going to be like, this is kind of crappy, right, where this show's going, and not what? good. That's, we're making the show. We are, yeah. And so then she's gonna go into the Disney Plus menu and eventually into the She-Hulk writer's room. What is going on? Then eventually meet with the head what? of Marvel, who as yeah. it turns out is just this creatively bankrupt robot algorithm making formulaic Wait, decisions whoa, whoa, whoa. based on what it thinks is popular. Okay, yeah. Stop. Hurtful. Wait a minute. You gotta let it go through. Come on, come okay. on. Let, let so them. she's gonna get him to solve the few problems that were actually happening in the show, and then we're pretty much done. So this is just pointing out that the writing was isn't very good make it better in some way? God, I hope so. Do you think we <laughs> risk making any future She-Hulk or even Marvel projects less captivating by having a super meta character that can literally change the script of the shows and movies she's in? I don't think you could ever go too meta, sir. Isn't that right, future me who's editing this video? Uh, you know, I'm, that's a great question, but I, I'm not. Like, I'm just filming myself pretending to edit this video. You know, I'm not actually editing this right now. Oh, maybe we should check with the comments section of this video. I mean, what do you guys think down there in YouTube comment section. Is it possible to get too meta? Super easy. Barley and inconvenience. <laughs> right, okay, that's pretty much all they say down there, I think. So anyway, what do you think? Why'd you just zone out for like 30 seconds? So anyway, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a pretty good time. I just feel like it's missing a little something to make sure that people tune in. I've got just the thing. Oh no. Yeah, Daredevil. Oh my Hi, god. Hi everybody, it's Ryan. Okay, I did not 
know that last part. What that is the lamest. That makes She Hulk even more lame than I originally thought. What? Like the fact that they create a whole show and then she's like, "Oh, isn't this lame?" It's like, well, you guys made the show. Like, you could have made it better. Yeah, I have to wonder if it was originally planned. Like, That's there, an there's, interesting there's, theory. There's something to be said for shows that'll make fun of themselves. I don't know why you would purposefully make something bad, though. Or unless they, they made it knowing it was probably not going to be received very well and that it was corny. They just did it to please whoever they needed to please. I don't know. I mean, I appreciate that they can at least go in and insult their own writing because it sucks. Um, I just feel like they should have created a show that didn't waste everyone's time and um, waste like a ton of money. I mean, you could talk to people that think all shows are a waste of time. So there is that. That's an extreme. But that one in particular, like it has no real plot, not super consistent. And then even at the end of it all, she's like, oh, it's isn't this lame? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's and... Really uh I haven't even gone to watch just the Daredevil episodes. I told myself that's what I was going to do, was just go pull those up. But apparently she's super horny, too. So there's well, a, she was at least, twerking, a, at least so. there was a handful of those scenes. You know, the yeah. twerking scene, I, I feel like it doesn't make me upset that she was twerking. It's just that, why? It didn't. Yeah. Add, it doesn't add anything yeah, to the I story. Agree. I agree. It's just, uh, on top of twerking already being dumb, uh, it just it didn't add anything to it. It was just kind of... There, like, like honestly, kind of like you said, like it's gonna make people upset, and then we're gonna make fun of those people that are upset. It'll, it'll really help. Yeah. Wow, that was way lamer than it was hilarious, but also super lame. All right, go to the next one. All right, we'll go check out our next one. Uh, okay, I have not seen this movie. I have not either, and uh, I don't even know like the, the plot to this movie actually at all. So this will be pretty fresh to me. I have. No idea what to even expect from this. So, all right, let me change our camera angle. Look, guys, it's Thor: Love and Thunder. All right, let's all right. Oh, watch gosh. my boy get emasculated somewhere. Yeah, new Thor know. movie for me. Yes, sir, I do. And let me tell you, he's dumber than ever. Oh. Okay, yeah. yeah, just real. He's not smart at all, this guy. All right, well, I can't wait to see him team up with the Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, we kind of ended Endgame with them taking off onto adventure together. Oh, yeah, and let me tell you, sir, the Guardians of the Galaxy are going to be in this. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, just ever so briefly. What? So we're going to meet this guy, Gore, right? And all his people have died, and his daughter, too, For even Chanel. though he's been praying to their god. Okay. And then he meets his god, who it turns out is a big old jerk, and then he gets chosen by the Necro Sword and kills the the god. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, so now Gore has become the god butcher, and he's just gonna go on a rampage. He wants all gods to die. Why? Well, he thinks they're all selfish, and they only care about themselves. Dang, well, it's gonna be crazy to see him going around butchering gods. Oh, yeah, except, no, that is gonna be happening off screen. But... He's the god butcher. Yeah, so he's off He's off doing that. We're not going to see that. I would like to see it. No. <laughs> ah, dang it. Anyway, so then we're going to meet up with Jane Foster. And what's going on with her? Well, she has stage four terminal cancer. Oh, my God. That's but terrible. But Marvel offered yeah, her enough worry, sir. Everything's money still to come back. Everything's still going to be hilarious all yep. the time. That's, that, that wasn't my concern. Still plenty of jokes per minute, sir. Don't even worry about it. Right, okay. Maybe there shouldn't be in some parts. We're going to be cruising at a furious JPM. All right. You know those screaming goat videos from the internet? From like from like ten years ago, yeah, yeah, we're bringing that and a bunch of screaming goats the what? whole time. All right, I mean that was really funny ten years ago. I guess it yeah. might still be funny now. Well, I hope you do like it, sir, because if it doesn't land the first time, it's certainly not going to land the next seven. Wow. Well, gee. So anyway, <laughs> Thor finds out from Sif that Gore is butchering all these gods in amazing ways that I'm never going to show you, and he's on his way to New Asgard <laughs> next. Oh no. Yeah, New Asgard has become like super touristy. Like they have an ice cream shop called the Infinity Cones. It has like an infinity gauntlet. Oh, no. I would like to point out that this is about the equivalent of any type of mass genocide and then turning it into a tourist shop. Like, this could be like Hitler's R Us or something like that, or Nazis R Us. I guess because it's Thanos's. He thing. wiped out half yeah. the universe for like, what was it, five, six years? I, I can't remember what it was. Yeah, it's he been took a little out while. half the population. Yeah. No. Yeah, but not, just, not just on Earth, everywhere else. Right, that's right. It because, was everywhere. Yes. And now they've turned it into a tourist shop. I can't. It's just, it's it's really odd what they've done to 
done to Asgard and Thor, but yeah. let's let's continue on this train wreck. Theme? That kind of seems like it's in poor taste. No, it tastes fantastic. I mean, it's ice cream. No, I mean, the Infinity Gauntlet was used in like a worldwide tragedy that's kind of messed yeah. up for the theme. <laughs> yeah, nothing a little ice cream can't solve. That's a good point. Yeah, okay. So Thor shows up to new Asgard and he sees that Jane is now also a Thor. What do you mean? Well, it turns out back when they were dating, Thor had asked Mjolnir to protect Jane, so that's what he's doing here. Wow, well, it's going to be cool to see her transform for the first time. Yeah, except no, that's off screen. Screen. That's off screen too. Okay, all right, dang it. So anyway, now she has this super cool <laughs> Thor outfit because that's what happens to you when you wield Mjolnir. That didn't happen to Captain America when he had it. Hey, shut up. And so then Gore steals all these children and runs away. <laughs> that was super rude. Yeah, and so his plan is to lure Thor because he just knows he's going to come to the rescue of these kids. He believes that all gods are selfish and only care about themselves. So his plan is to capture people that they care about because they would definitely come help them. I <laughs> yes. Well, okay then. <laughs> so Thor goes to the city where a bunch That's of a gods live, including Zeus, and he tries to get them to help, but they're all scared of gore. Oh man, all these gods in one place? That's the perfect setup for a gore the butcher attack scene. <laughs> oh, you know it, sir. Nope. Anyway, oh, so then they <laughs> impale Zeus with his own thunderbolt and steal it and run away. Oh, impaling people and stealing their belongings is tight. Oh my god. That won't hold up in court, by the way. That wasn't an official admission of guilt or confession. All right, so then they go <laughs> fight Gore and he steals Stormbreaker. Why? Well, it turns out that Stormbreaker is the key to the realm of eternity, where eternity will grant one person one wish. Oh, what's up? It just seems like maybe it would have been easier for Thanos to just go there instead of trying to gather all the Infinity Stones. <laughs> yeah. Or for the Avengers to go there for that matter. <laughs> Instead of inventing oh time my travel. Yeah, so the thing is, I'm gonna need you to it. get all the way off my back about previous Marvel movies. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much. So does Thor just summon Stormbreaker back? That's a thing he can do, right? Yeah, no, I guess it's not within his summoning range. He needs to change service provider. And then they find out that Mjolnir is actually draining Jane's life force. So if she uses it again, she'll die. I thought Good. Mjolnir was protecting her. Now it's killing her? Yes. Dang it, Mjolnir. What the heck? So Thor is like, all right, well, Jane, you can't come fight with me and also so Valkyrie got stabbed and Korg is just a face. He lost his body. Man, well, it's going to be hard for Thor to fight Gore. Honestly, I have a hard time feeling that bad that Jane is dying and Korg is just a face now and uh, Sif got stabbed or, or Valkyrie got stabbed because in um, Thor Ragnarok, his other three buddies all got slaughtered. I can't remember if it was on screen or I think it was off screen. You just see that they're dead and they don't ever revisit it. He never mentions it. It's There's just, just a lot of inconsistencies over. with the MCU. That's there was uh, there was sucks. there was Findrel or Fandrel, the uh, yes. the blonde haired Robin Hood kind of looking guy in green, yeah, and Baldor, the the big guy, and I am blanking on the the Asian guy, uh, but he had those three who were like, it was it was Thor, those three, and and Lady Sif, and they were like, they were tight, they were a group. They just kill them off. They don't come back, and it's over. So it's like, oh no, Jane's dying. Yeah, this is don't what care. happens when like you completely change the makeup of a character, like Thor, to where he starts off kind of like a brat, and then he matures, and then he becomes an absolute idiot. Like, yeah, that like that's that's, make that's what's kind of odd is like he started off as kind of kind of arrogant, a bit pompous. You know, I'm a god. Uh, you know, this stuff's beneath me. Well, let's go conquer some worlds and stuff. And then he gets punished and he learns his lesson. He gets kind of humbled. And we see him go through some traumatic stuff in the second Thor movie with his mother dying. Uh, I think I think Odin was put into the Odin sleep, so he nearly died as well. Right. But like, he, he continues to mature. And then in Ragnarok, we see him deal with his sister, the death of his father, and all this stuff. And we see that continued through... Um, Infinity War and Endgame, and then we get this, and it just... It was too much. Like, Ragnarok was a good balance. It, it definitely towed the line, but it was a good balance, and then the director, and I cannot say his name for the life of me, but he just took it way the other way. I, me I miss up his syllables. Uh, I mix them up. Yeah. Uh, Taita Wakiti or Watiki, yeah. I can't yeah, remember. something like that. But, uh, yeah, no, he, he butchered... He butchered Thor. And the thing is, is that he didn't have full creative control over Ragnarok. That they, was probably a good they thing. They gave him full control for Thor Love and that Thunder, was which mistake. is why we have seven or eight scenes of screaming goats. Uh, which, have you ever have you heard them? Yeah, I've heard screaming goats. You've heard these screaming goats? Oh, not these screaming goats. Okay, no. that's, a, that's a different story. We'll have to look up something afterwards so that you can see. Okay. 
or on his own. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, oh going to be hard. Me and also Classic. Valkyrie got stabbed and Korg is just a face. He lost his body. Man, well, it's going to be hard for Thor to fight Gore on his own. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because see, he's not going to be alone, actually. What do you mean? Well, oh, he yeah. lends his Thor powers to all the kids, which is a thing he can do now. So they all fight Wait. Gore and his monsters. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, and so then our hero, you know, the guy with the army of child soldiers attacks the bad guy who's... You know, the guy who thinks God should be nicer to people. That's, I, I don't know, maybe don't phrase it that way. Right, okay, the good guy fights the bad guy. Yeah, definitely keep it vague, that sounds better. Anyway, then Jane shows up to help too. But she'll die. She does, yeah, but then Gore is so moved by their love, when he makes his wish, he doesn't wish for all gods to die. What does he wish for? He wishes for his daughter to come back to life, but then he dies, so Thor kind of has a daughter now. Very cute. And Korg has his body back and he falls in love. How did he get his body back? I don't know, and so that's about it. <laughs> What do you think? Well, it sounds like a lot of fun, but do you think maybe we're going a little too hard on the Marvel humor? Sir, it's impossible to lean too hard on the Marvel humor. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Ryan. Ooh, all right. Let's see if I can find something oh here. Oh, my gosh. Uh, love and Thunder. Goats. What about that is first this, video? Is this all of them? I hope it's all of them. This tradition, the protectors of our world are bestowed with great beautiful. Which you accepted and I must take with you. How beautiful. Retrace your step. I'm with her. I'll just just shoot him. Yeah. If not, we can just leave it to meet. <laughs> it's like a mixture of like oh gosh <laughs> it's like a mixture the audio blast this is like a mixture of mario kart and like pirates of the caribbean <laughs> Yeah, so they had way too big of a part in the movie. Yeah. It's one of the biggest complaints about the movie, actually. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, so that one. I I haven't even brought myself to watch uh, Thor Love and Thunder yet because yet. every single person that I've listened to talk about it, that they did watch it, uh, doesn't want me to watch it. <laughs> like, don't recommend it. My dad's like, I started it. And it was just too dumb, and he turned it off and went to do something else because he had better things to do than watch that one. It just was not exciting, was not intriguing. Uh, gore is just, ugh, that's that's sad. Actually, I'm going to find, let me see if I can find a quick video on who Gore the God Butcher is in the comics uh, because that's mildly important. Let's see here. There's got to be a good YouTube short or something that we can use, right? Give me shorts. <laughs> okay. His dad never had him, guys. Well, if we can't find it, we'll you have to show it to me another time. But oh wait, here there's some shorts there. Yes, that's what we want. All right. Well, see the the ver what wait what are you doing? Oh, okay. making sure that it, people can see the screen. Oh, okay. Which one you want? Um, that first one is fine. That one. Defeated Galactus. Uh, no, you probably want this one right here. Okay. Gore the God Butcher. Explain in sixty seconds. First introduced in the pages of Thor, God of Thunder, Gore the God Butcher was a member of a pious, dying tribe on a hostile planet. Banished from his tribe due to a blasphemous outburst following the death of his family, Gore wandered the desert before being saved at the last moment when Null, God of the Symbiotes, fell to the surface while warring with another deity. Disgusted by a plea for help from Null's victim, Gore took hold of his weapon, the first symbiote, All Black the Necrosword, before seemingly butchering both of them. Empowered by All Black, Gore made his mission to rid the universe of all divinity, very nearly succeeding 
beginning with the construction of a celestial WMD known as the God Bomb. Disgusted by his father's near omnipotence, Gore's own resurrected child aided Thor, helping him to take hold of All Black so he could absorb the blast from the God Bomb. Though he was ultimately beheaded by the God of Thunder, Gore left his mark as one of Thor's most frightening villains, a wretch who bathed the heavens in the blood of the omnipotent, ultimately becoming that which he hated most, a god. So the short one, I know that's, he... I mean, that's a very compelling storyline you could have it's, had there. It's a uh, bit more interesting. I know I've seen a couple other uh, videos on him, and... Oh, actually, this one right here. That's perfect. Did you know that it took not one, not two, but three Thors to defeat Gore, the God Butcher? Making his MCU debut in Thor Love and Thunder, Gore will prove to be Thor's toughest foe yet. Gore has dedicated oh, so his sad. life to hunting down gods with the all-black Necrosword. And each time Thor faced off against Gore single-handedly, he's had his mighty Heine handed to him. Speaking of Heinies, that is until two younger versions of Thor were transported to the future to help King Thor. Together, the three of them bring the fight to Gore. And after a long brawl through space and a planet, the battle ends in his newly constructed God Bomb. A bomb to blow up gods. After young Thor bites one of Gore's eyes out, King Thor dual wields two Mjolnirs and absorbs the blast caused by both the All Black and God Bomb, blasting Gore into a weakened state. The defeated Gore is then rendered headless by young Thor. Gore is no more. Okay, but it took three different versions of Thor. One of them, uh, Thor, after uh, he basically received his, his uh, the powers of Odin. So it's it's... All Father Thor, he's older, more powerful. Honestly, one of the more powerful beings in the entire Mar Marvel galaxy. And it took him plus two other Thors to bring down this guy. And he just yeah. he did not get like any screen time. Yeah, it was just a disjust, it was just a disservice to the character. Yeah, obviously. and I think we talked about this in the last one. Is like you guys have source material already good written out, material. good source right. material, yeah, good yeah. compelling characters and stories, and you, I don't know what to do with it. Uh, it just the the creative license that they take is just it's too much, and they I just agree. kind of they, they watered him down. So I mean, you heard it all through the pitch meeting. You don't get to see him butchering all these other gods. You don't get to see him taking out all these other ones. Uh, I don't know. But this next one, I have seen. Oh, okay, and I haven't seen any of these. <sighs> I have my own comments, but I'm curious to see what the pitch meeting is for this. Okay, let's play it. This is uh, Doctor Strange. So, you have a Doctor mm -hmm. Strange sequel for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's going to be called Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Oh, boy. I bet we're going to see some wacky multiverses. Oh, you know it, sir. Oh, man. Briefly. What? Glimpses of them for a minute or so, they're going to flash by. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. That's all right. Yeah, and then we're going to pretty much be in the same two, <laughs> three true. universes for the whole thing. The person who can jump universes can't control her power. Oh, that's too bad. So who is this character? America. Captain America. But that's not possible at the end of Endgame, he turned into uh, Joe Biden. Now, this character's <laughs> name is America Chavez, and she got so scared of a bee that her mom's disappeared. What? They're gone, sir. But, okay, but... Oh, I said the funniest part in the whole movie. So she has these powers to, to basically rip through different dimensions. Right. And she can't control them, and she's there with her mothers, and... She gets scared of a bee and accidentally opens up a portal and you just watch her mother get sucked into this other dimension. She's like, oh no. It was the funniest thing. <laughs> just watch her parents. You just couldn't take gone. it seriously. Gone. Uh, no, I couldn't take it seriously. I was laughing in the theater because it was just, it was funny. It, you know, the little like four-year-old girl just lost her mothers. And she ripped them through another dimension. It was great. What about this America character? Tell me about her character development. I just did. Oh, all right. Yeah. So America has the power to open portals between universes, but it only happens when she's really scared. Bummer. And so at the beginning of the movie, she's with this alternate Doctor Strange, and he gets killed by this big eyeball tentacle monster. Oh, very exciting. Yeah, and they end up in our dimension, so our Wong and our Strange fight this monster. Oh, boy. So, so they're fighting and slicing, and eventually they do this special hand move and stab it in the eye. Probably should have led with that move. Maybe. 
So then Doctor Strange goes to see Wanda, but it turns out she's the one who's trying to capture America. What? Uh, Why? Well, she wants to use so her much. powers to go be with her kids from WandaVision, but in another universe. I thought we kind of had her work through all that in WandaVision. Yeah, but then she read an evil book, so that just undid all that, and she's pure evil now. See, this is why I don't read. So it turns out she's the one who said that <laughs> interdimensional tentacle monster thing. How'd she have access to that interdimensional being? Unclear. Wait, hadn't she, like, made her kids up or something? She had, yeah. Can't she just do that again? No. And I guess she wants to go see Vision, too, huh? No. Why not? Because. Can't she work with America <laughs> to find a universe where the Wanda's dead but the kids are alive? No. Why not? So the movie can happen. All right, well, it seems like this is happening. It is. And so now <laughs> Doctor Strange has to protect this girl from Wanda. Man, so what does she do? Well, Wanda attacks and kills a bunch of sorcerers, and Doctor Strange like and America all zip over to another universe. Oh, boy, what's going on in this universe? Oh, it's real wacky, sir. Red traffic lights and green traffic lights are switched, and pizza is balls. Oh. No, like they're balls of pizza. Oh, okay. So eventually they get brought in front of the Illuminati. Oh, who are they? Oh, we're talking Captain Carter, Maria Rambo, Captain Marvel, Black Bolt, Professor X, and Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic. Oh, they're all from things. They sure are, sir. <laughs> oh, boy, sometimes I recognize things and my brain releases fun chemicals. Hell yeah, sir. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm familiar with some of the things you said. Fantastic, sir. So Doctor Strange tries to warn them that Wanda's gonna come kill everybody, but they're like, yeah, no, we can handle her. Uh-oh, Wanda's on her way. She is. She does this thing called dream walking where she can control alternate Wanda's. Not good. So then Reed Richards, the smartest man in the universe, is like, Wanda, you better back off because Black Bolt here can destroy you with one whisper from his mouth. One whisper from his mouth? That's a weird way to phrase that. Where else would a whisper come from? <laughs> then Wanda's gonna be like, what mouth? And his mouth is gone. Oh, he was setting her up for a one-liner. That's why he said it's so weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then what happens? Well, then Black Bolt blows his own mind. I feel like it's weird that the smartest yeah. man in the universe told her exactly how to kill him. He shut up, and then she kills them one by one, and she can alter reality, so it's pretty brutal. So what happens to Mr. Fantastic? Oh, spaghetti? Oh, fantastic spaghetti is tight. Sure is. And what does she do to the others? Well, then she decides to stop altering reality so we could have a little action scene, and she makes something fall on Captain Marvel and crushes her to death. That doesn't seem like it would hurt Captain Marvel. Yeah, but it does, because this is just a cameo. And what about Captain Carter? 50% off. Oh, well, that's actually a pretty good deal. <laughs> so now Strange and America and an alternate Christine Palmer have to run away from Wanda through these tunnels, and they're closing blast doors, but she's just going through them. Uh-oh, so what do they do? Well, eventually, they close a blast door behind them, so then they stop and turn around to see if she'll get through. Why wouldn't she? She got through all the others. Yeah, well, they're gonna stop at this one, because Wanda's gonna do a fun little jump scare. Oh, very scary. It is. So eventually Wanda catches them and captures America. Oh no. And so she uses America's powers to send Doctor Strange and Christine to this destroyed universe where there's this evil Doctor Strange. Oh, so Strange has to fight an evil version of himself? Dumbass yeah, musical so battle. This musical fight. Yeah. Oh, like a rap what? battle? No, like throwing musical notes at each other with magic. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. I like my thing a lot better. Well, that's too bad, sir. So then Doctor Strange uses that evil book to dreamwalk into the corpse of that dead Doctor Strange. Oh. Yeah, so then he's got to go zombie fight Wanda with a bunch of souls of the damned and Christine's gonna kind of coach him on what to do. How does she know what to do? Unclear, but then they realize... I'm just gonna say the souls of the dead scene is like creepy in the very, very beginning and then it just looks stupid after that. Like, just so, it loses anything that looked interesting or I'm just so confused menacing. right now. I'm so confused. I'm just trying to like keep up with all the inconsistencies of this plot. <laughs> I don't know that there's inconsistent. Well, I mean, there's it's a there's a there's a bunch of inconsistencies, MCU. yeah, with that. And then this is just it's it's garbage. I'll say this movie's biggest problem was that they couldn't. They it seemed it was it was clear that I was watching a movie that they couldn't decide if they wanted to make it Marvel or horror film. They and they needed to make a decision about what it, they, they needed to. to. Do. It yeah. very much could have been a horror film, and it would have been great. And they could have done a Marvel film, and it would have been great. But this like weird towing yeah. the line between the two, it just didn't work. It just it really it clashed. It clashed a lot. You went from light heart, like like light, light lighthearted, happy, and then it would go like, oh my gosh, this is really dark. He's going to use the dark hold, and he's going to have all these souls around him and stuff right. and then it just gets stupid it just i don't know it just couldn't retain a personality basically yeah as to defeat wanda they have to use america's powers well that's gonna be hard to do since she doesn't know how to use them actually it's gonna be super easy barely an inconvenience yep, just gonna so all of a really, sudden be able to do it see dr strange tells her to believe in herself and so 
you know, that does the trick. Oh, that's okay. it. Okay. Well, great. Yeah, the power was inside her all along or whatever. So she sends Wanda to another dimension and sees her kids, but they're scared of her. So she realizes she's kind of a monster. Wow, wow, wow. <gasps> Wow. Yeah, so then she collapses a temple onto herself. Jeez. So at the end of the movie, America is training to be a sorcerer, just like Doctor Strange. She's not trying to look for her mom's. Oh, yeah. No, she's not. Well, no. okay then. So what do you think? <laughs> well, I think it sounds like a lot of fun. I'm just trying to think of some cool Reed Richards casting, right? You know, something that'll get people talking. Any ideas? Uh, nope. No ideas. Wait. Do that again? Do that again, but look to your right. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I know exactly who to get. Uh, so here's where I land with Marvel on this, is that two of my favorite characters, Thor and Wanda, have both been butchered by them. Yeah. Did you watch WandaVision, the I TV did not. I really let go of the MCU. I just, and it wasn't because I was like, oh, they're doing all this stuff. It really became like, I can't watch a TV series and a movie. And if I want to watch the movie, I can, you know, it happens in a TV series where I was like, I just, I don't have energy or time for this. Okay. So to recap, WandaVision in general is. Oh, how do we. Now I'm trying. Uh, now I got to remember how it all starts off. Uh, so she's having PTSD from losing vision, right? Because he yeah, died. Yeah. And he got right, his right. brain ripped out of his right. brain and heart and everything else ripped out of his head. So right. she's got PTSD from that, and it's evoked. She's kind of got helped helped a little bit by a villain behind the scenes. That I don't think she was aware of it. Uh, it's been a little while since I watched it, but essentially, she her 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 abilities. Are they're kind of magical based? They're more just reality warping. Uh, she created a reality like bubble over a town where she reassigned what everybody was and basically changed reality inside of this bubble to give herself vision and where they would have a life together and they had kids. Right. So right. she like PTSD coping through all of this. She like kind of knows she's doing it, kind of doesn't know that it's not actually reality. Right. And so the entirety of the story is her learning to accept it and deal with that grief and that these kids aren't real and that vision's not real. Right. And, the, and so she has this whole development process where she lets go of it and she frees everybody it's in very, the town. That sounds very her. interesting. Yeah. And yeah, then they really just threw it right out the window in this yeah. movie. Yeah. That's so, a problem. That's a big problem. And I mean, it looked like from the trailers, it looked like we were going to get like a Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange like team up on stuff, which was yeah. going to be pretty cool. They were misleading. <laughs> In that, obviously. So my my boy Thor and my girl Wanda have both been have absolutely decimated by Marvel, and uh, not forgiving him for this at this point. Actually, nor should you. Wow, those sucked. Uh, that really sucked. Do you have any videos you want us to react to? <laughs> you can send them uh, our way through Instagram or email. Facebook, whatever you want to use, doesn't matter. We'll get a hold of it. Um, that was fun and sad all at the same time and shocking. And No, there was nothing. I mean, no, there was no good shocking. <laughs> no, it was shocking like in the bad because I didn't know a lot about these plots where I was like, wait, what? With the She-Hulk thing, I almost. I, that, that, that's a big one because it's like, okay, all right. Deadpool is aware that he's in a comic book. He also doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, but she like okay. literally gets out of it and then rewrites the script. And I mean, he was right. You don't have a character. You can't have a character that's more meta than that, which creates yeah. a plot hole further in the MCU. Why doesn't she get out and go fix Thanos winning and, and wiping out half the universe and losing Black Widow? It's and a big mess. It what just, they and and Tony so and all of that. Yeah. It, yeah. It so that's, that, that is a continuation issue for me when they create these other story plots that, realistically could go back and rewrite what's already happened. It's lazy writing. It's lazy. Um, and that's, yeah. I don't want to, yeah. It's lazy. Yeah, we're done. <laughs>